Um, I'd like to welcome everyone today uh, on behalf of Anti-Imperialists for Global Justice to the third in our series of annual conferences inspired by the life and work of Walter Rodney. Anti-Imperialists for Global Justice is a small network of internationalists working against neocolonialism, state violence, corruption, gendered oppression. Okay, good to go. Oh. Um, sorry for that. Um, debt, extractivism and ecocide with a view to the total liberation of the working people of Africa, Asia, the Caribbean and the Americas. It is informed by the revolutionary Marxist Pan-Africanism and internationalist praxis of Walter Rodney. From this starting point, we have begun an international dialogue on Rodney's methods and teachings, praxis and his theoretical and historical work, and his practical revolutionary engagement, which was informed by his scholarship. Through this, we hope to build links with and participate in current struggles against the system of capitalism and imperialism. The theme of this year's event follows on from our previous conferences, which focus on Pan-Africanism, Marxism and the Next Generation, that's the first event we held in 2019, and imperialism and its neocolonial violence, which is the event that we held last year. Today, we'll be focusing more specifically on Walter Rodney and working people's history. From his PhD thesis on the history of the Upper Guinea Coast, 1545 to 1800, which was later published by Oxford University Press in 1970, through How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, and his history of the Guyanese working people, 1881 to 1905, Rodney's historical scholarship displays a deep concern with working people's history, exploring themes from the impact of slavery and colonization on these working people to the extractivism that continues under neo-colonial regimes today. Rodney's revolutionary approach to finding and recovering people's history from the colonial archive continues to inspire scholars and activists and has given rise to new histories from below, histories that we hope to celebrate with this conference today. Rodney's status as a radical people's historian is indisputable, but academia has long been averse to accepting Rodney among the ranks of its professional historians. Of the historical books that Rodney published um, in his lifetime, two were written in the traditional style of historical scholarship and only how Europe underdeveloped uh, Africa was written in a more accessible style that moved away from the conventions of historical scholarship. So it's kind of um, surprising always to see how little um, he does come up amongst those kind of traditional historians. But the content of his work and approach remained the same throughout all the historical works. But even today, Walter does not get the recognition that he truly deserves for his studies of working people's history from Guyana to Jamaica and continental Africa. History is written from below and with the aim of the liberation of working people from imperialism, neocolonialism and state violence. In one of his other major works, The Grandlings with My Brothers, a collection of public lectures held in Jamaica and at the Congress of Black Writers in Montreal, Rodney offered a pedagogical framework for intellectuals fighting to undo the epistemological distortions of imperialism. But for him, grounding was more than just a method of teaching, learning or knowledge production. It was a way of life. To truly ground, Rodney believed, the, true, the revolutionary intellectual must be able to go um, anywhere to reason with their people. This, of course, included going to places that many academics of Rodney's stature would not have set foot in. So this is a quote from Rodney from um, uh, The Groundings with My Brothers. I was prepared to go anywhere that a group of black people were prepared to sit down and listen. It might be in a sports club. It might be in a schoolroom. It might be in a church. It might be in a gully. Dark, dismal places with the black population who have had to seek refuge there. You will have to go there if you want to talk to them. Today, we celebrate Walter Rodney's legacy as a revolutionary historian, historian and scholar activist. The strength of his legacy lies in his exceptionally rich class, race and gender based praxis, informed by Marxist political economy, as well as his passionate commitment to African culture. 41 years after his death, Rodney remains one of the foremost revolutionary Pan-Africanists of the 20th century. As we all know, Walter's life was dramatically cut short at the age of 38 when a bomb hidden in a walkie-talkie detonated in the car that he and his brother were in. At the time, Walter's brother Donald was charged um, with the possession of explosives and Walter's true killer received asylum in, and uh, assumed a new identity. The independent commission of inquiry that was set up after his death to investigate the circumstances of Walter's death conclusively showed that it was not a random act of violence or an accident, as the Guyanese government had claimed at the time, but an extrajudicial killing, sanctioned and orchestrated by the state. In April this year, the Court of Appeal finally overturned Donald Rodney's conviction. And on June 10th, Attorney General Anil Nandal announced that Rodney's death certificate would be amended to acknowledge that his cause of death was not misadventure, as it was previously claimed, but assassination. 
It was also decided that Rodney would feature more prominently in the national curriculum, that his works be made available in the University of Guyana Library, and that Walter Rodney Chair be established, and that the Walter Rodney Chair be re-established at the university. This welcome correction of a massive miscarriage of justice has been made possible by the hard work of campaigning of Dr. Patricia Rodney, Donald Rodney, and all the activists who have been fighting for justice since June 13th of 1980. As we commemorate the 41st anniversary of Rodney's death, we must remember that the struggle cannot stop here. Historical wrongs of this scale cannot ever really be made right. But through our efforts to continue Walter's political and historical work, we can celebrate his life and legacy and can, can contribute to his emancipatory project. So just to run you through the panels quickly that we'll have today. Um, the first presentation of today will be given by Chantal George from the University of Glasgow, who will be discussing the problems with reading Walter Rodney at SOAS, at Walter's alma mater, and also my own, um, I did my undergraduate there. Here we'll get to explore Walter's complicated relationship with the bourgeois academic institution and how this institution has tried to manage this challenging revolutionary output, as well as how or if SOAS has embraced or received his work. The second panel of the day will focus on Walter in the context of continental Africa, with Chenida Chukudinma talking to us about Rodney's analysis of class formation, class contradictions, and resistance to imperialism in Tanzania and East Africa, and Hamza Haji, who was also part of the first conference that we had in 2019, speaking to us about the colonial epistemology of education and its impact on African youth today. The final panel will explore Walter's contributions to the historiography of Guyana and his role as a revolutionary historian with a set of talks from Kimani Nehusi from Temple University, Wazi Mohammed, a former colleague of Waters in the WPA, and Cecil Gotsmore, who will be speaking to us about how Rodney's historical work pushed back against the imperialist divide and rule strategies, which sought to sow the seeds of division among Guyana's multi-ethnic working classes. So just a brief note before we get started, um, the event is being live streamed on YouTube and a recording will be made available as soon as possible. If you have any questions for the panelists, please place them in the comments section of the YouTube stream. Um, Amanda, who is co-hosting with me today, and I will pass them on to the panelists at the end of each panel. We've also allocated some time for discussion among the panelists, so if you have any questions or comments for your fellow panelists, um, please do not hesitate to ask them. We'll just be doing that after all the um, viewer comments uh, and questions, uh, we've, after we've gone through those. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us today to celebrate the life and work of Walter Rodney. This event is of course dedicated to him, um, but we'd also like to dedicate today's event to comrade Aziz Chowdhury, who has recently passed away and who will be sorely missed. Amanda will be saying a few words in honor of Aziz at the end of the event.